give a round of some microphones and everything for you. Okay, okay, I was going to sit at that side, but I'll sit a little bit nearer. There we are. Are you both well? Yes. Very well. Excellent. Thank right, thanks. Thanks for coming to it. Right, so we're here to talk about All in Flux, which was the last classic Doctor Who story filmed ever. 30 years ago. Has anyone seen anything exciting about uh, Doctor Who 30 years ago, the last week or so? No. No? Has nobody seen a little trailer for a Blu-ray? Yeah? Who's excited for that, to see Ace back on screen? Fantastic. Fantastic, that is. So, we are going to talk about Ghostlight. So, um, it was written by Mark Platt. It had a fantastic cast of people. Guys, would you like to tell me what your initial thoughts were about that story? No idea about it. <laughs> I'm still trying to work out what it was about. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was good, wasn't it? It was, uh, it, it was the, the best um, one in the studio, I thought we did. The set worked really well. I never liked the other studio ones. But that one I liked a lot for that reason. And also it was very dark. And there were some wonderful actors in it. Sophie Aldred was one of them. <laughs> yes, uh, Michael Cochran as well, he was there, wasn't he? Yeah, Mike Mac was there, gosh. Uh, and others. I remember walking into the... Because uh, I, I, we, obviously we got the scripts beforehand, didn't we? And I remember reading it through thinking, wow, this is complex. You know, this is like... Which was a good way of me saying, I don't really understand it. But, um, but I thought I did understand it. And then... We got into rehearsal, the rehearsal room, and I thought I was in the wrong room because around the table I could see Sylvia Sims and John Nettleton and um, all these sort of posh actors who did dramas, uh, and they were all in in our Doctor Who. It was amazing, and um, we read through the script, and um, everybody was so. Good, weren't they? The the actors, they yeah. were all uh, so kind of um, good, so right for the part. Ian Hogg, Catherine Schlesinger. I mean, you know, the list goes on of these amazing people. Yeah. And do you remember Sylvia Sims was? Um, she wasn't very happy, was she, at the read through? No. And I remember Sylvester saying to me, "Right, prize for the person who gets her to crack a smile first. And of course, it was it was him. It was, it, we, we, that was our job, I thought, mainly. Doctor Who and Ace, that was just an excuse. Our real job was to make sure um, uh, unhappy actors had a really good time. <laughs> and that was our job. And we, we did get a few. There was, uh, I remember what, what, the wonderful German actor who he came from. Oh, Anton Diffie. Yeah, he, he, he lived in Monte Carlo. And he came and said, the only, the only reason why I took this job was because of the tennis in Wimbledon. So that's the only reason why I took the job. And he was you know, playing these damn bad Germans again, because he's spent, he made a fortune actually playing nasty Nazis. Uh, but anyway, by the end of it, he was a happy man. We, I mean, and he wasn't very well as well, which was, so that made us incredibly proud that we managed to, you know, give him some joy. Sadly, he, he didn't last too long after that. I don't, I mean, we didn't kill him, it was just, you know, honestly. I remember with him, uh, I know it's not about Ghostlight, but um, we were rushing to get everything done by that time because there were a lot of strikes. So we got into the car park in Elstree to film Greatest Show in the Galaxy uh, by the skin of our teeth. And you, lot, you went off for a read-through of Silver Nemesis yeah. at Elstree but I was filming in a scene, so I couldn't be at the read-through. So the floor assistant read in for Ace, and then when we, so when we got to the, the rehearsals for Silver Nemesis, poor Anton was really confused, because he didn't know, and I turned up, and then they gave him Dragonfire to watch, uh, and to try and make head or tail of what Doctor Who was all about. <laughs> and the very, yeah. <laughs> and the first thing he said to me was, Ah, so you are Sophie? And I said, yes, I'm Sophie. And he said, but you were so fat, he said. Because he watched Dragonfire where I have my big jacket on all the time. Yeah. But anyway, he cheered up after that. Yes. 
So you, you mentioned the sets and that. So did the, it felt very claustrophobic and very dark. Did that help with the story? Yeah, very much so, really. The, the set was... Uh, these things do help, don't they? Like, uh, create, you know, costumes help, shoes help, sets help, script most helps most importantly. And um, yeah, it was, it, it was good. I enjoyed playing that set. I think the BBC do such, do period drama, which is really what it was, so yeah. brilliantly. And the, um, the props make it as well, you know. So yeah. Every room we'd go into. I know, the butterflies. Remember the butterflies? They were stuck, all, the, all those bugs and things. They were absolutely real. And you just felt it. You didn't have to really act much. You just, the, it gave you the atmosphere and the feel and the danger and the mystery of it. And there was, those stairs were real as well. There was this great entrance hall. Of course, you only saw it was amazing. Yes. Considering the budget. And then, when, I mean, and doors opened, slid open. But in the early days of Doctor Who, when I first, the very first one I did, I remember, um, I used to walk manfully towards the door and it was supposed to go, and I go, and then try again, and then, you know, because there was two men behind it pulling it, and it would go wobbly. <laughs> but the, the lift did go up and down, that was amazing. So Sophie, Ace um, seemed to grow throughout season 26. Her character really did develop, but, and I think that comes to a head in this story where, where the Doctor is almost manipulating her by bringing her back to, um, to the house. How did that feel to, to get such good character development for yourself there? Well, it's amazing, isn't it, to have, uh, to have the opportunity to do that. And you decided, hadn't you, you wanted to be a much more mysterious doctor. Yeah. And a way of doing that was with this relationship with Ace. Yeah. yeah it's a good idea. You wanted to be kind of darker, didn't you? And yes. I remember when I, you know, when so when it, uh, Bonnie was leaving, I thought, oh, I hope when we the next um, companion that we don't get one who's a screamer. That wasn't Bonnie's fault, that, I mean, lots of them. Go, doctor, doctor! Or, or ask questions, Doctor, what does that mean? I, I remember thinking, I had the idea of, um, oh, what was that TV series with um, uh, the guy with the bowler hat and the umbrella? Um, oh, the prisoner? No, the, the, the girl. Um, oh, the Avengers. The Avengers. It was that kind of world, I thought, that it should be a bit like that, really. And, I mean, with Bonnie, bless her, she got the role of, in, in Doctor Who because of her scream. What happened was she was doing a charity with John Nathan Turner and one of those big dipper things up and down all over the place. And she screamed and he said, wow, that's a great scream, you better be in Doctor Who. That's how she got the role, really. And she wasn't really happy with it, um, and rightly so. Uh, and thank goodness now we do big finish stories with her and uh, she's, her characters developed beautifully. Yeah. Well, um, I can't remember what the question there was, I've wandered off. <laughs> A tangent. It was about the doctor's darker side that you brought out, the manipulative. Oh no, it was about Sophie, it wasn't it? It was more about Sophie's darker side, uh, not darker side. Um, oh, the character. Yeah, um, Sophie's character. And how I want, I mean, it was my um, Andrew and I pushed for that, Andrew Cartmel. We seemed to think a lot, a lot, a lot alike at that time. And so Sophie was lucky to get the role at that time. Didn't have to scream, just had to beat the bejesus out of Daleks. It's funny because I, when I first got the role, that was my impression. I thought, this is weird because I'm not this kind of screaming type, you know, who, and, um, and I, I wonder, and then of course I read the script for Dragonfire and went, ah, okay, this is a different type of Doctor Who companion. So at the time, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. It was noticed by especially by Germans. Uh, yeah, so I mean, there's some really unsettling moments in the, in the story. You mentioned about the, the butterflies and the stuffed animals and all that kind of thing. Um, so how do you think that would fare going out to, uh, to, the, to the audience of Doctor Who when it was some real adult themes almost throughout that story? I remember we were rehearsing and...